Example one, it states, find the area and circumference of a circle, whoops, with the diameter of three. So we're finding area and circumference of a circle. So let's refresh our formulas. Okay. Area is what, Ms. Stokerby? Pi r squared. That's the one where I know I want to have the squared because it's area, which is squared units. And circumference? That'd be a C. Is going Oops, to be. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I said it and wrote it wrong. You did. Circumference is the 2 pi r or pi diameter. And question is, you know, which one to use? Well, it just depends on what they give you. If you read on, they give you the diameter, so hmm, I'd probably use the pi give, diameter. give it away. Um, so which one do you want to find first? Let's go ahead and let's do the circumference since we just talked about that formula. I pi think, diameter. I think that's a great idea. So if we know the diameter is 3, so that means the d is 3, how would I write that? I would write that as 3 pi. I wouldn't want to write it pi 3. Think of pi like a variable. It's not a variable. It's not unknown. But when you're writing them, that's how you're always going to want to write your it's, answers. It's a symbol, so you always write the number in front of the symbol. Exactly. Now, this brings up a good point that you're going to see throughout the year. Um, this answer right here is what we call in terms of pi. And another way to think about that, this is the exact answer. Sometimes we're going to ask for the exact answer. Not as much now, but as we progress, and we'll kind of remind you of how do I know which answer do I want. Um, Another answer I can get is a rounded answer, and the reason why it's going to be rounded is because pi is actually not exact itself. Right. How come you put that little squiggly equal sign? Oh, yeah. We haven't seen this yet. This is actually means approximate. Oh, okay. This means I'm rounding. Um, what does pi represent? Well, we know that it's like around 3.14-ish. Okay. <laughs> but it keeps going. We know that it's an irrational number. All right. So if I wanted the approximate answer, how would I find that. Well, I have a pi button on my calculator. Ooh, I love that pi button. And so I would take three and then just times that pi button. Yeah, you just push three pi in your butt or your calculator and you get, let's do two decimal places. Do you have two decimal places? I don't or have just two one? decimal places. Well, let's let see. me type that in. So three, three. times the pi is going to be 9.42. It's actually 424, but the four behind it does not round it up to a three, so just 4.42. And again, we're not going to be super picky about rounding, you know, do you round to the 10th or the 100th, unless it states so. Um, this is just something just to get comfortable with. Now, could you put 3 times 3.14 in your calculator? Yeah, but it's not going to be as exact because I'm really rounding when I say 3.14. And I know that sometimes our books say 3.14 or use 3.14 for pi. Ms. Plarimo and I both agree, do not listen to that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're taking a standardized test, like for example, if you're taking the EOC test and they tell you, which is your end of course test, you'll have, we'll talk about it later, and they tell you to use 3.14 for pi, then by golly, use 3.14 for pi. But any other time in this course, we're going to go ahead and assume always use that pi button. And the other reason why I like to use pi button, it's less buttons to push less time. And mathematicians, we're not lazy. We just like to be as concise as possible and do things in the least amount of time. Exactly. All right, moving to back to area. Again, we just kind of skip to circumference first, but if we're finding the area of this circle, we have the only one formula, pi r squared, but they only give you the radius, so, or the diameter, so we're going to need another radius. So right. How do we do that? I'm going to have to do half of 3. So the radius would be? So the radius would be 2.25. Half of 3 would be? Oh, sorry, 1.5. 1.5. I'm already ready to give you the next part. <laughs> She's skipping ahead. I am. All right, so we know 1.5 is the radius, so we're going to substitute that in, and I'm just going to write it kind of as you see it. So I'm going to do pi times, and I'm going to do 1.5 squared. You could even put parentheses around the 1.5 so you don't forget you're squaring just the 1.5 and not the pi. Right. Um, and she, Miss Ms. Hograby did a little bit of math for I me. I already went ahead and did that 2.25. She did. <laughs> she squared the 1.5 first, and she put that out in front again just like, um, circumference, the pi comes after the number. Um, this would be, again, the exact answer The in terms of pi. If I rounded it to two decimal places, it would be 7.07, .07 because it's really 7.068, but we know that 8 behind the 6 does round it up. Round it up. Perfect. And 
again, question might be like, how? Do, which answer do I want? You know, we're we're pretty flexible right now. Later on, we're gonna be specific. Okay, I want the rounded answer. I want the in terms of pie. If it says to round, then that's definitely what you want to do. Absolutely. All right. Example two is next. It says find the perimeter in the area of the figure. Well, looking at this, they don't tell us what figure it is, but looking at the properties, we notice that it has all right angles, and all the sides have the exact same number of tick marks. So we know that the sides are all congruent. It must be a square it then. It must be a square. So we want to find the perimeter and the area of our square. Now, let's think back to our formulas for a minute. They give us one side length, but we know that all those sides are congruent. We have a radical 11, or the square root of 11, is one of our sides. It may be, have been a little while since you guys have seen radicals. That was in, um, towards the end of algebra. But when we talk about the perimeter, we're adding all of those sides. So we could write that as what? Well, I like four times a side length. Yeah, that's what I like too. So four times a radical 11, which is just four radical 11. That right there is actually a simplified radical answer. It's and exact. That's exact. That's a perfectly wonderful way to leave it. If you want to give us the approximate decimal, that would be a 13.27. Okay. Now, that's our perimeter. That's one of the things we had to find. But they also ask for the area. So let's talk for a second about area. We know that to find the area of a square, we're going to take what? Side squared. Okay. So we're going to take our radical 11 and square it. What happens when I square a square root? Well, they're, they're opposite operations. So when you square a square root, it basically undoes that radical, which means you're left with, left with the radicand, which is the number underneath. So you're left with just 11. Absolutely. Now, notice that we're not labeling these right now with units. I could call these all just units and units squared. Because they don't actually give you a unit here, we're not going to probably be quite as picky. But mm -hmm. if you notice that there's like a centimeters or inches or something marked, make sure you do label those answers as well. All right. Now we have an example with coordinate plane. So we've done some stuff so far this year with coordinate planes, so we might have to think back. Um, it says find the area and perimeter again of a triangle. We can see that. And they give you the vertices of this triangle. So if we're finding the area, let's kind of refresh our memory on how to find the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. Now, just again, a reminder, the base represents, base is always a side. And the height is always what we call perpendicular. And there's a symbol for perpendicular to that base. So in this picture, we have three different sides we could choose from. We just don't, and we don't really know. Now but we know we need it to be perpendicular. So that's something we'll kind of hit on in just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, perimeter, you got to find what? All my sides and add them together. Okay. So. Oh, uh, are we going to be using the distance formula? Why would you think that, Mrs. Hogrady? Well, because they're on a coordinate plane. And like HK, I can count, or I could technically use the ruler postulate mm -hmm. to be able to find that length. But hj and kj, I'm going to have to use the distance formula. So because the fact that these are diagonal and we're finding, when we're finding perimeter, we need to know the length of the sides, which means we need to know the distance of all the segments, which means distance formula. Now again, a reminder on the distance formula. I'm just going to make it a little note. We're going to use a distance formula. We're going to have to take the square root of the difference of the x values squared plus the difference of the y values squared. Oops, I have that. <laughs> and those can be interchangeable. So let's knock out maybe the easier side first. Okay. Let's do, Ms. Huckrave mentioned HK is pretty easy to find because it's a vertical. Um, and she said something about ruler postulates. So you could do one of two things just to stress that. You could think about, well, H, it kind of goes vertically right through here. So it's kind of like it's saying it's the coordinate is 2 there. And here, vertically, is a negative um, 4. So you could just say, well, 2 minus a negative 4, which is saying 2 plus 4, which is 6. Or, and, of course, it would be that absolute value if you did it the mm -hmm, other way around. Mm -hmm. If you count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The, the downfall of the counting is what if this picture is not drawn or if um, it's really, really big. 
it's easy to do the subtraction. Um, could you use the distance formula for HK? Sure, I could. Yeah, it's just not something you have to do. It's less work here. Anytime so, you have a horizontal or a vertical, you could do that, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, so HK is 6. I might just label that in the picture that this is 6 units. All right, which one do you want to go next? Oh, let's do HJ. So we're going to do HJ. That's one. this one. And they give you even the coordinates for H and J. So if you need to, you can also even go back to the picture, label it. I don't know if you need to. I'm just giving you some ideas. So we're going to have to use the distance formula again. So we're going to take the square root and subtract the x's. Let me just show you the setup. So it would be negative 2 minus 3 squared plus 2 minus a negative 1, so plus 1 squared. Now, I'm going to have Ms. Hogravy help me out so I don't have to show all the work on sure. here. Sure. Well, I know that it would have been a, a 5 squared and a negative 3 squared, so really a 25 and a 9, which would give us a thir radical 34. And guys, again, when we did this uh, a few days ago, showing this work, you don't have to show every little step, but we want to see some work. We want to see the setup, see kind of where you're going. As we progress this year when we use it more, um, we won't need to see every step as well. All right, so radical 34, mm, do we need to leave it in a decimal form? Well, let's leave it as radical 34 for right now. We'll probably need the decimal later. I like that, because what's the point of putting that in a calculator? until we absolutely have to. Sounds good. All right, so moving on, let's do KJ, right? Yep. So let me set it up, the square root of, all right, so we're using K and J this time. So we have the X coordinate, so three minus a negative two, so three plus two, square, that quantity squared, plus negative one minus a negative four, so plus four, that quantity squared. So a little bit of help here. So we're going to have a 5 squared. 25. Uh-huh. And then a 3 squared, so another 9. Oh, look, that's also radical 34. That means oh, this, this is was an isosceles, isosceles triangle. triangle. Which we'll talk about. Well, you've talked. You've known about this, but we've talked about it. All right, so with that, could we find the area of this now? Or the perimeter? That's what we're focusing on. Perimeter, sure. We've got two radical 34s. So I could write that as 2 radical 34, right? Uh-huh. And plus 6. Now, we probably could also give that rounded decimal answer, too. Okay. Now, if I type this in your calculator, this is where you got to be careful. Just a reminder, if you type it in how you see here, when you put 2 radical 34, there's that little bit of parentheses there. Close it first. Or what I, I always do, do, I put 6 first and then put 2 radical 34. Or I'll type in 2 radical 34 hit equals and then just mm -hmm. plus 6. Yeah. Either way, you'll end up with 17.66. And so that's one answer. Oh, man. Now we also have to find area. Goodness. This is a <sighs> long problem, Mrs. Palermo. I know. I'm sorry. But look how this is not. This is using skills we've used already this year. We're confident in our distance formula. Now, Area. We've used a distance formula for perimeter. Are we going to have to do it for area? Well, let's see. Now, remember, area is one half base times height, or you could do base times height divided by two. Now, we already know a base is a side, so we have three sides to choose from, but we do also know that the base is perpendicular to the height, or the height is perpendicular to the base. So, do you see any of those three sides that would be the easiest? Again, mm. we're going to be smart about this. Do you see a side that would be the easiest side to use? Well, if I use HK as my base, mm. I know that what would be perpendicular to a vertical line would be a horizontal line, and I could just count those measures too. Yeah. Okay, so we know that this is the, if we're going to use this as the base, I'm going to call this B, then I need to draw a perpendicular height to that. So it has so to go through J. It has to go through J. If I draw just a horizontal line, I should use my segment thing there, and this would be end up being perpendicular. Yeah. This would be your height. Oh, I like that better. That's not so bad. So we can find that height, and like you said, it it's horizontal, so you could easily count. You count it. That's so five one, units. two, three, four, five. Yeah. So my height is five, and my base is six, so let's put it into our formula. Sounds great. So it'd be one half base times six. height. Now, these could be interchangeable. Multiplication sure. doesn't matter. So I get a half of 30, which is 15. All right. 
This next one, it says a maintenance worker needs to fertilize a nine hole golf course. The entire golf course covers a rectangular area, oh, that's probably important, that is approximately 1,800 feet by 2,700 feet. Each bag of fertilizer, so we're talking about bags of fertilizer, will cover 20,000 square feet. Ooh, right here I'm seeing square feet. So we must be talking about what? Area. Area. Probably going to be something that's going to be helpful for me too. The question is how many bags will the worker need? Okay. So, so it's not really just asking for area. No, because they actually... They want to know how many things, how many bags of fertilizer we're going to need to buy basically right. to, to cover this space. So okay. To cover the area. Okay. Well, can I find the area? Yeah. Because I, we've got, we know it's a rectangle and if it helps, draw a picture. You don't have to, but you could. And we know that it's 1,800 by 2,700. So to find the area of that rectangle, I would take what? The base times height, so it would be 1,800 times 2,700. This is going to give us the area. And what, is that a pro or what does that end up being? It's a big number. Okay. It's 4,860,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Square feet. All right. Now that's the area. Each bag of fertilizer covers 20,000 of those square feet. Okay, so if I want to find how many bags I need, could I take the area and divide by the 20,000 square feet? Sure, because that's going to give us how many of those sections it's going to be covering, and gotcha. how many bags that will be. So what is that going to give you when we divide that? 243. So 243 bags of fertilizer. All right, now just something to be careful with, guys. When you see word problems like this, you're probably going to need a label because we need to make sure that you know what you're answering. So we're looking for 243 bags or 243 bags of fertilizer. Last problem. It says find the perimeter of a square with an area of 289 square centimeters. So, all right, we know how to find perimeter before of a square, and that's just adding up the, the four sides or taking four times the side length. But do they give you the side length? No, they give us the area. So kind the of only way we can find the perimeter is we gotta find that side length. Okay. So if they let's let's think about what they do give us. They do give us the area. Okay, well, we know that the area of a square is going to be that side length squared. And we know... We know the area. area. So if I put that in there, let me just kind of get a visual of this. Oh, so now I'm just solving for S. I know how to get rid of a square. How do you do that? With a square root. So I'm going to square root each side. So the side length ends up being... 17. 17. All right, okay. now, are we done? No, because they asked for the perimeter. So then we just put that back in for the side length. To find the perimeter, you just take 4 times 17. So that will be 68. Do I need a label? Oh, they don't put any labels on there. So it's, oh, they do, squared centimeters. So 68 centimeters. There we go. And we're done.